one to avenge them. Me! Me! I'm going to defeat you! Yeah, so, uh... We found some shit. Hey everybody, it's Zarkator, and, uh, uh, warning for this video, um, pretty much everything I'm gonna go over in this, uh, follow-up Goss video is very, very subject to be patched, um, literally at any second, because, uh, what we're gonna be doing relies on several glitches in the game, so... We have to go over uh, some minutia about Goss and Goss Prime. Um, so, okay. So here's here's a thing. Goss is passive. A thing about his battery that um, is only told to you right here is that when it is filled, uh, you just get a faster shield recharge and a recharge delay. Um, now... Recharge, shield recharge and shield recharge delay are, they have a cap in the game. Um, just like, you know, heavy attack efficiency and stuff like that. Um, so that you, you can't just have like infinite shields immediately recharging and immediately refreshing the shield gate for itself and you'd be just completely invincible, right? Um, that there is a cap for that in the game to prevent that from happening. Um, however, it has been found out um, I'm sorry, I don't know the progenitor of this information, but uh, it has been found out that with Arcane Aegis on Goss, uh, combined with his passive giving you that um, extra recharge delay from his passive battery, um, Arcane Aegis, once it procs one time for a mission, meaning any mission you start, you take some damage to your shields, Arcane Aegis procs, as long as Aegis has procced before you have died for the first time, and you know, you might be incredibly unlucky and just not hit the proc chance and die once at the beginning of a mission, but once it procs, um, this combined with Goss's passive uh, actually breaks the cap. And uh, we also have Vigilante Vigor and Fast Deflection, which are two mods that nobody has ever used before. <laughs> because these further increase the uh, recharge delay time. Um, they all work together and it breaks the cap for shield recharge. So we're going to spawn the strongest enemies that I am allowed to spawn currently. And their AI is not paused or anything. And we're just going to stand here. As you can see, Arcane Aegis has procced up here. That's fine. As soon as it runs out, uh, you know, my shield recharge should uh, be gone and I should be able to die. But, as you can see, it just procs again, because the cap is broken. So th this is a glitch, or seems to be a glitch, or an exploit of some sort. So as I said, as soon as anyone in DE finds out about this, uh, it is subject to change very, very quickly. But, um, as far as we can tell, it has been in the game since before Goss Prime came out. I guess it just got popularized, or more people just found it recently uh so I, i'm here to spread the good word before it gets patched so some people can uh you know enjoy some really easy level cap runs now you are completely invincible there are a couple of things to note one uh the more your battery is charged on the bottom right here mine actually isn't even all the way charged once you get it up to 80 percent and if you're in red line you should take it to 100 percent um you know it gives you even more recharge delay breaking the cap even further and making you even more invincible um, you don't want to use Goss's 2, because when you have your 2 on, um, taking damage lowers your battery. And so you don't want that, because we're relying on the battery being filled. So you subsume his 2 off, and you can put literally anything on there. I just slap Roar on there, just for extra slash double dipping for, like, heavy attacks on my melee. Um, but you can do whatever you want. Zada's Whisper, Nourish, Gloom even, if you just want to slow enemies down for some reason. A grouping ability, literally anything will be fine. Um, I put two green uh, Archon shards on Goss just so that 
um, any uh, corrosive damage I do will strip enemy armor, and that just, you know, gives me more damage. So, if I wasn't killing these enemies so fast, you would see that their armor gets fully stripped. Uh, point is, I'm completely invincible, and you can still do the red lines. This build that I have, I'm going to show it in a second. This build that I have in particular, let me get the battery up to 100% real quick. Alright, so we're at 100% battery. This build has insanely low range, like this is my Thermal Sunder. But you can still do the uh, Thermal Sunder nuking stuff. I need some energy, though. Um, it is very energy hungry, but yeah, it still works on like, you know, one or two enemies at a time that you can fit in here. Uh, not so effective, not so efficient uh, for nuking, but, you know, uh, melee influence, for example, is pretty good for that. So you do shit like this. And slash proc takes you right out. This is a, just, it's just a cost assist. This is by no means like the best melee weapon to uh, be doing, be or be using with Goss here. But, uh, you know, point is you're invincible. There are a couple of things that can still damage you. Namely, uh, Pox and Procs obviously can still just go right through your shields into your health. And also, um, like, uh, Leech Eximesis, the ones that sap your health, they can still sap your health normally. So, just watch out for those two things. There's a couple other things that can still damage you. But, uh, for the most part, you know, in, in missions that you're gonna be in for a long time, like Void Cascade, any Grenier survival on the Steel Path, uh, th this is what you're gonna be seeing. So, it's pretty good. <laughs> um... Another thing I wanted to go over is that if I let me just kill these guys. Um, another glitch that has been found. This is a this is an older glitch um, that is still in the game, so it's it's less likely that this one is going to be patched um, as soon. But it's still a glitch that I would not uh, rely on. Let's go to a heavy or a, a melee. Melee weapon that focuses on light attacks, like the dual icor here. Um, I've made a specific build for them. Um, so just you run in the middle, blood rush, weeping wounds, uh, melee exposure instead of um, influence because we don't have electricity. Um, because that's fine. Because we're gonna go in here, and we're going to equip. Uh, where is it? Combat discipline? No. Melee Guidance, that's the one. So Melee Guidance gives you minus six seconds of your melee duration. And the default melee duration of all melee weapons is five seconds. So we have negative one seconds. And so what that means is... Let me uh, pause the AI here. What that means is uh, we cannot build combo. I'm hitting the enemies and my combo is not going up whatsoever. Um, and that sucks, right? You, you wouldn't want to equip melee guidance, right? But here's a thing. Here's a thing. Um, if you have a companion that does melee attacks, such as a Kubro or, you know, um, there's a specific Sentinel weapon that does it too, uh, you want Tandem Bond because that means their melee hits will, uh, um, you know, raise your combo counter for you. So I'm going to have my uh, weapons out, hit them, so... Tanarak. Okay, bad example. Point. Uh, sometimes <laughs> your companion will do a melee attack and give you some combo. Um, the obviously using a companion for that is not very reliable. A more reliable thing is the Rauta shotgun. Uh, this came out a couple of months ago. Um, its special quirky thing is that every pellet that hits an enemy counts as a melee attack and will give you a piece of melee combo count right um, so we just build for maximum um, like fire rate reload speed and uh, 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 multi-shot right and uh, so this is not for damage whatsoever um, what we do is see I have my melee weapon out zero combo and I have negative one seconds of combo duration so I can't build combo right that we've, we've established that if I shoot something with the router I now have some combo. So if I just empty two clips into an enemy, I will have 12 times combo. And since my combo duration is negative one, 
that also means it doesn't ever go down unless I heavy attack if I heavy attack it does go down and that is why we have opportunities reach the uh, the Tenokai mod so that if you have an Incarnon weapon or a weapon that just does good uh, heavy attack damage what we can do is just get a Tenokai and then bam now I have my Icors are in Incarnon form and I have infinite 12 times combo for light attacks and you can just clean up just like this. So, uh, like I said, the Rauta or Tandem Bond on a companion that actually attacks with melee attacks is the way to go here. I heavily recommend the Rauta, but if you don't want to sacrifice your uh, primary slot in your arsenal, then Tandem Bond is the way to go. It's just that, again, you can't really rely on your companion actually hitting things. Anyway, so those are the two glitches that we are uh, utilizing with Goss today. And uh, as you can guess, you know, once you've procced Arcane Aegis, you are just completely invincible. So he, this, this is the build for it. If you don't want to do the melee gun stuff, just use a good melee weapon or just good weapons in general. Empowered Blades would be the alternative or Steel Charge, depending on exactly what kind of melee setup you're going for. So like Steel Charge plus this normal looking hybrid build on the dual eye core would be good there's something that made life it's like i'm completely invincible i have a little bit of roar and we just go to town like normal with melee influence and this is all run in the middle stuff but i'm just completely invincible and yeah that's pretty good still so yeah those are the two big things that i just kind of wanted to go over you can easily take this stuff to level cap, as you can imagine. Just bring, um, you know, something that, like this thing, for example. <laughs> I do have a ribbon, but you definitely don't need a ribbon for the Bubonico. This thing, for example, can uh, easily take any, uh, any disruption. Bubonico's very strong. And with two green shards on my Goss to make corrosive damage strip, this is a... Uh, Quite ridiculous as you can imagine especially the further you go on it also has a uh, gun co equipped so if you do the alt fire it's just times like you know 100 damage or something something along those lines so if ever you're not killing something in one shot just alt fire one one time and then shit dies so quick quick and dirty little build video on that today um Go try this out. So again, the, the important things are Arcane Aegis, and you do kind of need it at rank 5 for the uh, the amount of shield recharge really helps because it it um, it is going into the broken cap of shield recharge. So you want as much as possible. Um, energy Nexus is just for energy in general because I don't have like Prime Flow or Streamline or anything. So this just helps out. Usually, you definitely don't need PSF. Um, I mean, you're not using Gosses too, so you are susceptible to knockdowns. Obviously, a knockdown isn't going to kill you unless you get knocked down into a Leech Eximus or a Toxin Proc or something. But, uh, you know, it's just nice to have, and uh, there's really nothing else. You could put, like, a, a Strength mod here or something. I guess this would be the Flex slot. And uh, it's, just, it's really good. It's, it's, it's very strong. So two, two cool little glitches that are really, really crazy. So I just wanted to showcase that kind of stuff. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, I am Zarkator. Thank you for watching, and I will see you out on the Star Trek channel.